start with your name, like your, your the project? Uh, Jason Kaminsky, um, and it's a solo project, just going by my name. Okay, and how could, how would you describe like this? Um, I think it's I've always described it as folk pop. It's kind of coming from a folk background, but a lot of the songs have that uh, pop sensibility. And how long have you been writing, uh, you know, original material for this? Um, this project started about six years ago, um, I think. So um, moving into, I've got three, I, I think I've released three different, um, like EPs, LPs, um, hoping to do another one this upcoming year. What's your process like? Like sitting down to write a song or to record something? Uh, for? Typically songwriting, um, you know, the music will kind of come first. I'll sit down and write the music and I'll usually have a melody vocally in mind, but the lyrics usually come out later. But lately <laughs> it's been changing, you know, so I think uh, I try to and approach each new song with, um, you know, an open mind, different approach every time. And how's that change been working out? Um, I think I kind of just let it flow the way it's coming naturally. So I think the more I do that, the less I get frustrated with trying to force something out. So I think that's kind of the way to go to make it work. So I, uh, Evan told me you're in a you're an actual band. You're in a full band too. Uh, beyond this, so what, what's the deal with that? Yeah, Stalemate is my full band. Um, I've been doing that a lot longer than I've been doing the solo stuff, and it's you know the songwriting I do for that as well. So the songwriting's similar in some ways, but the sound of the band is a lot different than you know what I'll do acoustically. How does your approach change specifically when you go from like writing for a band versus writing for solo stuff? Um. It depends. I think in recent years, I've tried to start writing uh, the band's material directly through uh, electric guitar and an amp, just so I can kind of get the feel of what the song's going to sound like. Um, but because I, I used to write exclusively just through an acoustic, and then you know hear how it sounds full band later. But I think it's helped separate the projects because I felt like my last solo album was starting to sound too much like the band. So it's kind of the uh, solution I came up with. And what's your, what would you say, do you have like an end goal in mind out of making music? Like what do you, what do you hope to accomplish through, through this and through Stalemate in general? Uh, I used to want to get rich and famous, you know, but no, I, I just, I like doing it. So, um, the end goal is hopefully, you know, I'll be able to continue to do it and hopefully people will still want to listen to it. So it's fun. So I, I'm hoping it sustains that way. Where does the fun come from specifically? Um, creating something, you know. I think at the end, the end project, when you get to listen to it back, you know, and you think about where it started, it's it's cool. You know, I th I think that's um, any any kind of creation, artistically, is um, invigorating. Um, can you kind of talk about like, be you're from. Lorraine or Illyria? Illyria, yeah. So can you kind of talk about that and kind of um, like blank slate coming into existence and just if you have any yeah, stories yeah. with that? Yeah, 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 blank slate. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, there a lot. Um, I help book shows there as well, um, run sound, play shows there. Like everything that they do there is is awesome. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a little older, um, so I think the original scene there when – Kind of when I was in high school, we had a place called The Spot, and there were a lot of touring bands that came through, and it was a, an awesome scene. And the high school there has a great music program. So when we lost that, you know, there was a, a big void for a while. And I think, um, you know, it's been a collection of people that have made Blank Slate what it is and, and you know, continue to make it work. Um, but obviously, you know, Eddie Marflack is, uh, you know, the head of the of the uh movement and i think he you know he has a lot of passion for that and for keeping it going um and i think it's kind of cool that they're starting to incorporate things besides music you know with arts and comedy and you know just social meetups as well so yeah it's awesome and what's what's coming like is there anything in the pipeline right now you're working on anything new you're 
Um, yeah, I haven't talked about it, but I, I'm about to go in the studio in a couple of weeks to start working on a new um, album. I don't know, you know, if it'll be, you know, five or six songs or if it'll be ten songs. You know, I'm kind of waiting to see what happens because I think it's something that I wanted to change in, in that regard with trying instead of trying to prepare you know and plan out and you know decide what I wanted to do with the next album I decided to just contact you know a local studio that I've worked with a lot and going with a batch of songs that I have and you know see what happens once I get into the studio what's that studio going to be uh upper room studios in Elyria as well um, a gentleman runs it. Um, he's got like a barn behind his house. That he built himself, you know, the studio himself. And um, we've, I've recorded uh, two of my solo albums there, and a few stalemate albums have been done there as well. Who would you play with if you could play with any act uh, that exists now or has since departed from this realm? Wow, that's a loaded question. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I think I get the most enjoyment out of playing with bands that I know, friends of mine. Um, I mean, we just played a show at, uh, Plymouth House, you know, Honeymoon and, you know, semi-haunted skate park and, you know, bands that I, that we know through the scene, it's always a lot more fun. Um, there's a fest we do in Kalamazoo every year called Fat Guy Fest, and that's kind of, a reunion of sorts you know all the bands that we've been friends with over the years always make a point to play that and it's great to see everybody but um you know I, I think it'd be cool to play with a legendary band of any any sorts too you know if you were to open with a band that you know everybody knows like even if they no longer existed anymore it'd kind of be cool too so I don't know I'd have to think about that one for a while <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, if, if there's anything you want to close out with, anything you want people to know? Um, no, I don't think so. I think uh, I think we covered everything I wanted to talk about for sure. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me. Sure, thanks for coming out all the way from my neck of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Drive through there every day going to work. I work in Lorraine too, so. What do you do? I'm a teacher. Eighth grade language arts writing. Cool. So is there any, you know, crossover between your your musical career and your um, your I, professional career? I try not to have one, but there is. <laughs> yeah, there is. You know, the kids, every year they find my stuff online yeah. and then it becomes something. But, um, you know, I got to teach a, a poetry unit every, every year or two. So I kind of incorporate music and lyrics and stuff like that within uh, the poetry lesson so it's there yeah what's it like when those kids find your music um it it's i don't know it's fun uh, i think usually they're surprised by it you know oh, my teachers uh, plays music and yeah. stuff and you know i've done a lot of traveling with it so it's i think for me it, it i use it as a way to to show them that you know you don't have to be you know, famous or signed or anything like that, if, you know, the DIY scene's a beautiful thing, you know, so if you want to play music or you want to go places and do that, by all means, you know, give it a shot, you know.